What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we have a brisk jaunt throughout the Sunless Sea. Hopefully going back to Esteval to use the Mirror Catch box to finish off our quest over there. And that should give us a box full of sunshine too, which I think is actually illegal to have. I don't know exactly what you do with a box of sunshine once you have one. But I assume you give it to somebody who is in a dour mood and it makes them feel better. I don't know. Then again, I like enlightening people. Ooh, punny. Anyways, I like making people happier and like raising their spirits and lightening the mood. And what better way to do it than with a box full of sunlight. So we're headed off to Esteval today to see if we can make ourselves a colony out here somewhere. Our terror went up a little bit because unfortunately I had to deal with that nightmarish whatever the hell. I got one of the events where you gotta deal with your nightmares and unfortunately it gave us five terror. We'd already seen it before so I didn't feel like doing it. What is this? Azalea? has run mad she roams the ship cudgel in hand smashing comrades to the deck she cries she is angry oh she is angry we can well our irons quality we can just take her down I'll shoot her dead there we go your Zaylers well your Zaylers weapons roar and down she goes you recite a hasty funeral for the poor soul and her wretched victim but who will be next okay so our crew is a little bit low right now we lose one more crewman and we might be adrift at sea. Still, there are things we like have to accomplish right now and so unfortunately I think I'm trapped in a situation where we've got to take the chance. We haven't died yet in this playthrough so I'm not that worried about it. Not going to be that big of a deal. You're supposed to die in this game like over and over and over again. It's a, supposed to be a bit of a roguelite but I think they sort of gave up on that front of it when they were designing the game. Now it's much more of like an adventure game that you kind of just play over and over and over again and hope for better results. Much in the same way that you play like Sid Meier's Pirates I guess would be the other game that I would draw the correlation to. Still, if we can make it to Esteval, we still got enough fuel left. Everything's looking pretty good. There's just things we need to accomplish right now. Unfortunately, I didn't have the Jar of Souls. I forgot to bring that out for the Devilus, I think, that's up at Mount Palmerston. So we won't be able to do that part of the quest, but oh well. Alright, so we have sun. Is this really sunlight? Then open the box wide and let it brim. Warning, this may increase. Okay, well, let's go ahead and we'll compile our port report first. We can gather supplies or go beachcombing. Let's go beachcombing. We don't need supplies. And so we can go with driftwood, something glinting, or a nasty glob of goo. Let's go for glinting. And so we got two drowning pearls. Oh, that's really, really good. I think you can actually use those. The stories there are about drowning pearls. They've never seen the inside of an oyster. Place one under your tongue and you can name the date of your own death. Don't place it under your tongue because they're the transformed eyes of sailors lost at sea. Stories aside, they'll fetch a good price. Yeah, they will. Those are actually pretty worthwhile. I think we can also take those over to the Canet and we can use those to barter and make our reputation better. Let's increase our wounds. The box will remain filled with light until it's opened. Even underground they do it with mirrors. Oh, it didn't increase our wounds. We got a sunlight filled mirror catch box. And so now that we did that, sun, a great beam of sunlight bathes the island. Wait, I thought that that was going to get rid of all the light. So it appears as though maybe I could have, well... Maybe I should have brought more boxes then, because now we have illegal contraband on our ship that's going to get us into trouble. What do you do with the sunlight? Like, what do you what do you use this for? We will consume the sunlight. So this will empty your box, give you a wound, and slightly reduce your terror. I don't think that's the best of ideas. I'm not entirely sure what I do with a mirror catch box. It's not one of those things that I've ever actually had while playing the game and so I suppose we'll just have to take a second and in fact one second here back to what I was talking about though although I can't really remember sorry my air conditioner sounds like a helicopter taking off and so I try to get it out of the background whenever I record episodes for all of you here on YouTube so for right now the game plan that we are putting into motion floating motion to be more specific I'm trying to go up to, I guess we could go to the Empire of Hands and grab ourselves a couple more stories from there. We also might be able to do, I think we should probably have something, oh no we don't, never mind, we don't have something awaits us at port. We've been out for a while, it's April Fool's Day right now. A lot of things happened on April Fool's Day, it was a very busy day for us. 1888, I wonder if you can just keep playing this game until it goes up to like the 1950s and 60s. World War II never happens because we're down below the surface and nobody thinks about it. Yeah. Whatever, you know, we like our new subterranean existence. There's no reason to kill each other. Actually, Germany, it sunk back down into the... The Germany, it sunk down into the ocean as well. And so, obviously, we don't have any of the issues that we would have had in history causing other things to happen. Whatever, you know, we're not going to talk about it here. This is not a history class. This is Sunless Sea. Let's go to Port Stanton. All the way up we go. Port Stanton. 
You want to get here a little bit faster? The Empire of Hands. All right, so in port we can zail. If we wanted to go further, we could do something else right now. We could do Monkey Business 20. We can travel to Hearthsake Village. The cannibals always have a seat at their table in the Lost Trailer. Oh, okay. So we have Fountainhead. I yeah, let's do that one. That one says it has tombs and treasure. I like tombs and treasure. We can visit the Delightful Adventurous Camp. Oh, she made it over here with a small army of monkeys bought with her soul. She evacuates or she excavates the vault of the first emperor. Okay. So we can say the delightful adventurous helped by her faceless clay man bodyguard Barnabas and a small group of worker monkeys hired for the price of her soul. They work to excavate the vault of the first emperor. We can bring a gift for the monkey emperor. The delightful adventurous has already uncovered to put aside many treasures. A small statue amongst them looks particularly interesting. We can speak with her or we can go to the vault or we can leave the camp. Let's speak with her for a moment. Oh, it's you, of course. Help me with these blasted maps, would you? The monkeys are quite clueless. She shakes her head. They claim our souls, uplift them, but if you ask me, it's just a case of monkey see, monkey do. Can you believe that they think the Zeppelin of theirs will let them create a new empire? Wait, you there, take that out of your mouth this very second. Okay, well, let's go, I mean, can we go inside of here? It may look centuries old, but this entryway is relatively new. The monkeys can never leave the... Can never leave well enough alone, always adding bits on as their whims demand. I don't know, leave it alone? I think there's a word missing right there. So, I like how it goes pitch black. The tribute to the Emperor's first and greatest has been constructed over generations by monkeys working with stolen ideas of what an ancient tomb should be. So we can leave... Or we can leave her to her work. So does nothing happen inside of here? Oh, okay, so it said that we can return later when she's ready to open the vault, I guess. Since we're doing that, we can go to her camp. Let's go see what's going on over here. Let's do the gift for the monkey emperor. At least you don't think so. It's hard to tell what with Barnabas' blank face giving nothing away. Can he see? He seems to be able to somehow. In any event, he makes no move to raise an alarm as you take the small trinket. You now have one, a gift for the monkey emperor. Okay, so do we go back, and if we leave here... Can we give that to the monkey? If we go to Port Stanton, is that is that where the monkey emperor is? Let's get our port report. And so there it is right there. We can take shore leave. If we could get a monkey or a rusty locket. A parasynthetic jungle holds many dangers. Step carefully. There is no authority beyond the fence. Or we can go an audience with the civilized mayor. Talk business? Why, yes, yes, of course we shall. But after a cup of tea, one or one must do these things correctly. Darling, do come in, the civilized mayor purrs. Whatever can I do for you? The soul of the delightful adventurer sits comfortably in him. A foul or a four-souled ape of cold ambition and very few scruples. We can sell our soul to the mayor. He doesn't have much to offer, but if you aren't using it, I don't think that I want to be soulless right now. We can get fresh supplies for 20 echoes. Oddly little of the Empire of Hans' natural bounty is edible. The monkeys will help you find the good stuff for a fee. Okay, and we can get emergency fuel if we really have to. I don't want to sell my soul to a monkey, though. This doesn't appear to be the best idea. I guess this must not be the monkey emperor. This is the monkey mayor. Completely two different actual civic stations in life. One has a little bit more power. One has a little bit less. We're not going to bring it up right now because he's got crazy eye, and I don't want to bait a monkey biting. Still, we could take shore leave. Sure, why not? Oh, man, we got 10 terror. It is a place of death, where the bones and still rotting carcasses of man and ape alike are left to the thirst of the Z. The charnel history of the Empire of Hands stretches out amongst the flies and the maggots of the apes who would be men in their stolen civilization. Something glints around the neck of a skeleton, a locket. You pocket it, though it does not look like it is worth much. The Z infamously takes much. Sometimes, though, it gives it back. Perhaps this will prove to be such a time for some hopeful soul out there. So because our terror is so high... Did that just, like, go in here? Okay. I think our best chance for right now... Well, we can go to Sovereign Island and give the gift to the Emperor, I guess. They still demand a gift worthy of the Emperor to open up their court, perhaps on another island. It has been a long while since you spent this much time behind oars. Your muscles will be glowing by the time you finish your business in the Empire. Like, are you talking about some kind of, like, radioactive infection? Because if glowing muscles happen here, I want to be a superhero. Call Stan Lee. 
We'll get this all done. We've got today the Sprawling Palace. It's called the Wild Wheeled Court. Tomorrow, who knows? The world of the Pentecost apes is one of cruel whimsy, where stolen traditions last only as long as their amusement. The gates are guarded by two armored monkeys that would look adorable if not for the blood on their bayonets. Humans are not welcome without an invitation or a worthy gift for the emperor. Let's go there. The stench and the heat as the gates open are a sucker punch to your senses. Inside, the stagnant air of the windowless wood palace hangs with sweat and tastes of hair. Everything is filthy and every surface used. The apes is likely to swing across the roof as walk the floors. In prized, oasis, in prized oases of relative calm, the high soul conduct themselves with the poise of the highborn lords and ladies. Around them, their barely uplifted lessers scamp around exhausted, taking orders and cruelties from all who care to dispense them. In the middle are countless more, a sea of apes longing for advancement and fighting for what they have, with tooth, claw, and low cunning. Emperor Crispin IV holds court in place, or in the heart of this place. None may speak without permission, but the voice of the emperor is still, and last heard of all. To step into his throne room is to step into another world, a polished one of cool and blessed quiet that already feels as alien as it is pleasant. The Emperor sits on his throne wrapped in robes of violet and wearing an ornate golden mask. He remains motionless and silent. He could be mistaken for a statue if not for the almost imperceptible nod to grant his seneschal permission to speak in his name. She approaches, arms folded in the red trim yellow robes of the court mandarin. Her expression is carefully blank, the chestnut hair on her face powdered alabaster white and decorated with exquisite detail in red and black. The rings on her fingers mark her as the ten-souled ape, a status even the admiralty can respect. She bows before you, a complicated ritual display of sweeping sleeves that somehow never breaks eye contact. Finished, she waits for your response. We can remain still, we can curtsy, or we can bow. I think that one's probably a bad idea. I mean, remain still. It seems like we might get ourselves in trouble. I suppose we could try this one and just hope for the best. Well, we tried to bow. Did you do something wrong? It appears so. Be that as it may, there is business to discuss. The Great Exodus. The exquisite Seneschal requests your assistance to supply the Empire of Han's great work, a zeppelin that will take them to a new home far away from here. You point out that the Admiralty has the Empire of Han's both under embargo and quarantine. The only thing worse to be caught... The only thing worse than to be caught doing here than supplying them would be helping them escape from their confinement. Have your people not already caused us enough pain, she demands? We starve, and you would prevent us from being fed. We thirst to explore, and you cage us like animals. Why? And for what fine purpose? What threat are we to you? We happily dine with devils, or who happily dine with devils. She shakes her head almost with pity. What could you possibly see in us that shames you so? I... sure. Why not help them build the commission? With a pair of servants to row the boat, she takes you to the Zeppelin site in Port Stanton. It was originally the project of a traveler from afar hoping to travel east who encountered an accident. In his plans, an engine, or in his plans and engine, however, the monkey saw their great opportunity. The great exodus will require supplies and fuel, of course, explains the exquisite Seneschal. We also seek souls to uplift our brethren that they may join the work. You will, of course, be reasonably compensated for your expenses and rewarded upon a completion. She also hints that there may be faster ways to complete the Zeppelin. To say more would require a level of trust that you have not yet earned. Okay, so I guess we got to work on the Zeppelin by getting souls. Okay, so you need the crates of human souls to make that happen. There's no shops. Now that we got the Zeppelin thing, let's get up out of here. And since our terror is so high, ooh, this is really, really bad. Like, of all the things that are bad, the badness of this is pretty elevated. If that gets up to 100, something terrible happens. That's all I'm going to say. But we are pretty far away from home right now. That's not what I want. I want my charts. Okay, so the best way to do this is going to be... Let's go for Palmerston, I guess. Once we have Palmerston, what we'll try and do is we'll travel along the northern rim of the map, staying close to glaciers and everything else, and hoping that we can keep our terror down. Otherwise, we're going to get ourselves into pretty serious trouble along the way. We simply do not have the amount of terror... Yeah, we simply do not have the amount of terror in stock that we need right now in order for this to be a successful trip. And so for right now, we've got Nablus Reef. I think I'll probably try and make it up to here. We'll follow this around in order to keep our terror low. Because we only have 16 terror remaining until basically we die instantly. 
If I can stay along the edges of this big guy right here, we'll be in better shape. We have to go to Guider's Morn, though, too. I think the Mirror Catch box can be sold there. That's what I'm thinking, anyways. I... How much higher can this take me? Anyways, yep, that was a band that existed when I was young. When I was young, Creed was definitely rampaging across the earth, musically and violently. Let's go ahead and see if we can make it to this lamp over here before our terror goes high. Come on, you can make it, I believe. I believe you can make it. Okay, so we made it to Port Palmerston. We gotta wait for our terror to fall off real quick. Should probably also get a little bit of fuel from here so that we can make it back to London. I'm gonna go to Mount Palmerston. We can explore the inside of the island. I'm a little bit worried about doing that because we may end up with more terror than we can handle. I am gonna grab myself a port report very, very quickly. At these shops, we can only buy... Oh, we can buy fuel. Good. And devil bone dice. We need all of those. So I needed seven devil bone dice in order to make this all work. You can also buy Zoop here, strangely enough, an ambiguous Eolith. Okay, well that should be enough fuel to more than make it back to London. I'm gonna buy... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should be enough for the journal, correct? Where's the adventurer's thingamadoobie? It's over here for London, right? We've got, find seven devil bone dice. Let me check that one more time to make sure that I know how to count properly. We've got the mirror catch box. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about our terror. We could explore the island. I mean, it's allowed. I'm probably not going to. we got a privateer encampment. Oh, we can't walk away. We can creep close and we can eavesdrop or we can just attack. Let's go for it. Unfortunately, oh, we have no crew left. That's not good. No! All my crew are gone, unfortunately. So we lost all of our crew. Oh, man, that blows. We were so close to doing something worthwhile, too. Into darkness, you will be mourn. Okay, so we don't have an ironclad will. So that's going to be the end right there. Your first captain has died. Don't worry. These things happen. Explore boldly with your... I don't want to explore boldly with my new captain. We've already done everything there is to do in the game. Oh, man. This sucks. We're, like, far enough into where there's no point in, like... Eh. So we can inherit a weapon. We could be Captain Drizzle Dower's rival pupil so we can retain half the cash salvager half the veil's value wait how is that 50 percent of my iron value my iron's value was 50 oh that is okay never mind i'm an idiot so our iron's value would be that much ew well i don't know if we even should restart because we've done so much of the game right now that like most of this is just going to be backpedaling and doing the same shit that we've already done. I'm a little bit concerned about it. I think it might have been a bad idea. I... Eh, I don't know. I just don't know. Perhaps. Perhaps. Either way. Let's go back through and I think that we'll probably grab... I'll probably go with... Eh, how much was the gun worth? I can't recall how much the gun was worth. Because if the gun isn't worth that much, taking half the cash would be probably a better call right here. I mean, we're only getting one iron out of it anyways. We can keep one officer, so we could decide which officer we wanted to keep along the way. Not a bad plan either. We can keep our chart. That wouldn't be so bad, because we would know where everything's at, and our map actually isn't that bad. Losing our cash would suck, though. Hmm... I think starting with a thousand would probably be the better plan. I don't know. Twelve hundred is a lot of money. Let's go with that one. We'll start with how much did our gun cost? The Cotterell and Sage, whatever. I wish that it said the numerical value of I think it cost a thousand. So this is still probably the better call. Let's just do that as our legacy, I guess. So there's our legacy right there. Captain Drizzle Dower unfortunately died. We we died fighting the way that I expected we would, killing pirates. So that's pretty cool. At least we died in a manly fashion still. Got to choose our path. And so I will probably be... Let's try pages this time around. We'll be a poet. And so we'll take that, and that gives us the Sly Navigator, who is one of the first guys that you can get that actually increases your pages value. That gives us a little bit of money. So we have 50 pages now. 
And so we can work on all the other stuff just however we want to. Unfortunately, we don't have any secrets or anything, so this is going to take a little while. We've also got to choose... So our father's bones is what we were working on before, so that's probably what I'm going to go back to very, very quickly. If we end up continuing this playthrough, like I'm going to finish the episode, if we end up continuing the playthrough, what I'll probably do with it is... I'll probably just skip the dialogue that we've already done so that we fly through quicker. I'll probably just go with... Let's go with my lord. Let's be a noble this time around. That sounds pretty good. And so we're going to be my lord. I don't want to be a bald lord, though. I'd like to have some hair. He definitely looks lordish. He's got his, like, a bandana thing going on. At the same time, he's got his wine glass that he's yoking. Okay, this guy right here looks like he's probably the most sophisticated. Or we can go with Indiana Jones. Huh? So are we a descendant? What did we say we were? We were his something, rather. Somebody that worked with him that got to keep all of his money. So we probably wouldn't have the same last name. Hmm. Drizzle Dower. I don't know. We'll call him Muggy Bottom. There we go. Why his bottom is muggy, I'm not really sure, but apparently it needs to be dehumidified. There we go. And so we'll be Lord Muggy Bottom. So we have Mr. John Huffam, editor to the Expurgated London Gazette. He's published your poetry from time to time. One week ago, he casually mentioned that your turn of phrase is very like your father's. We take coffee at Caligula's. Huffam curls his fingers around the steaming cup, a protection against the dank cold of the morning. Oh, yes, I knew him, a man of some talent, your father, but he turned that talent to, uh, love poetry, ghostwriting it, if you understand me, and as you may know, love poetry draws the attention of a particular power. He glances out of the window. You follow his gaze to where the spires of the Echo Bazaar rise above London. Huffam leans forward. The masters of the bazaar, he said very quietly, took an interest in your father, so th though I liked him and although I like you, I will need something to set against the risk. Bring me news, news from the Z, and so he wants a Z story, a tale of terror, and a memory of distant shores so that he'll tell us more. Okay, I'm gonna sell this off real quick. There it is. Just take the 50 echoes because I already know what we're doing. The Labyrinth of Tigers. The hell is the Labyrinth of Tigers? Oh, we can purchase a live specimen from in there? Wow, okay, so that'd be kind of cool. We can go to London. Let's get the first Admiralty survey. So we'll speak. We'll take the Admiralty Commission. They want me to go to Guider's Morn, which is usually, I think, the first one that they give you. In London, I think for right now, we should probably plan. We've got a little bit of money, and the reason that I did this was actually more or less to make sure that we have enough supplies to start the game out and do, like, one big quest at the beginning. And so we're going to go all in on that one right there. we got 25 fuel. We're looking really, really good. The next thing that I would suggest that we do is if we take to London, we can take a tomb colonist. It's going to make me throw something away. <laughs> Not something that I wanted to do right there, but I forgot about it. We'll take that very, very quickly. She's the greatest city in the Unter Z, and don't you forget it. Visit the Admiralty's office, and so they'll pay for information from Z captains. I don't need that right now. Our crew is looking a little skimp. We don't need to put anything in the dry dock. And so I think we should probably go to our lodgings and read the morning paper so that we have recent news. And then from there, let's head on out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I think we should probably head up to the north, as I always do when I first start out. I think it's always a good idea to head up to the top and then head to the right. What does this guy do? What does he seek at Z? The Z, Captain, look at it out there. It's not our friend, and don't forget that. So what does he do? He gives us one mirrors. So he increases our... Oh, he can increase our mirrors, so maybe it's not him. Maybe I should have done something different. Either way, we're playing differently this time around. What does he seek at sea? But now that you mention it, he wants us to go to Frostfound. Okay, that's cool. We can go to Frostfound. Oh, good right there. I probably should have read his dialogue, huh? Damn, now I feel like an asshole. Well, he said basically in a nutshell. I read that very, very quickly. I skimmed it. He said that he wanted to go to Frostfound. He had always wanted to see the icy wastes, and that's pretty much all that he said. So we'll try and get as many fragments for right now as we can... Since we've got 50 pages, that's going to be pretty good. We'll convert fragments into secrets much better now that we have that. I'm going to head to Hunter's Keep so that we can unlock that. We're going to try and get as many port reports today as we can. I may play a little bit of catch-up in between episodes or at least get some of the travel out of the way so that we're not totally wasting our time here. I wasn't planning on dying that soon. Was not planning on dying that soon. We were actually in really good shape aside from our crew, which happened to be the only weak point in an otherwise strong playthrough. And I wasn't paying attention, so we got ourselves into trouble. I probably should have spied. Either way, it was a gamble, and we lost. Let's spy on the house. It's a modest challenge, sure. Why not? So we gained 40 fragments. We succeeded in the challenge. You peer through the half-open French window into a grand parlor, grand in size, as if a little reduced in style by dust and neglect. A dark-haired, pale-skinned young woman bends earnestly over a piano keyboard. 
Okay, well, I think we've already done that one right there. And then we can reconnoiter the island and get the port report. I'm not going to present myself for right now because I'm going to try and hold on to the news. It might be a little bit more valuable to someone else. Let's kill the lights because we have a good amount of terror right now. So there's no reason for us to be using up all of our fuel. And our next stop is going to be Vendor Blight. In Vendor Blight, we're going to have to drop off the Tomb Colonist. Although we might have to pick a different option because we don't have... Ooh, is that a pirate right there? Yeah, let's go after that pinnace. Mm-hmm. I am intensely interested in that pinnace. There we go. Oh, we took you from the side. Now you're done for, pinnace. Now you're done for. Ne'er again shall you fire at me. Keep our targeting strong. There it is. And we sunk him down to the bottom. Loot and scuttle. Got ourselves a cache of curiosities. And we got a cask of mushroom wine. Not too bad. Not too bad. So there's a couple ways you can use mushroom wine, but for right now, it's not going to be useful right this second until we find, I think you got to find the, not Guiders more, but you got to find the place with the Godfall. That's what it is. If you find Godfall and Godfall happens to be really, really close to London, you can actually make a lot of money by running mushroom wine in between the two locations. However, if you're unlucky, like we were in our last playthrough and Godfall happens to be way far out, unfortunately, meh. Little bit of a pain in the ass right there. Let's continue up and around to the left once we get that handled I knew I shouldn't have explored that island. I knew I shouldn't have and I clicked it anyways I knew I should have just made haste back home uh, Like right when I clicked it and I saw the picture. I was like I made a mistake I just I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it and I know I shouldn't have done it too That's the worst part when you make a mistake knowing full well that you've already made that mistake before in the past You've brought the decaying emigrant north, now what? The tomb colonist surveys Vendor Blight, shaking her head. It won't do. It won't do at all. I had no idea the place would be quite so unprepossessing. Perhaps we can liven it up a little yet. If only I knew a helpful Z captain. Bring 10 units of mushroom wine to Vendor Blight and perhaps they'll have something for you. That's a little bit expensive. I mean, we can make that happen, but eh. You can provide wine and join the celebration too if you wanted to. Okay. What else can I do here? Let's explore Vendor Blight. We'll get ourselves a couple of fragments. In an open wild space beyond the Hollow Temple, you happen across a stepped platform of sorts. Four statues guard it, marked with glyphs, all but lost to time and idle vandalism. They look a little like the glyphs that decorate the Echo Bazaar in London, though. At the heart of the platform is a long-filled well shaft, too. You poke about briefly, but something in the place makes you uneasy. A frost moth, the size of a farmer's hand, flutters down to perch on the well's edge. Another, a third, you retreat. Okay, so we can gather gossip for a little bit. We'll grab that. I'm also going to talk to the curator. We've already done this before, so the curator wants us to get the colors, as you'll remember from before. We can accept the commission to get that all done. All right, and then we head northwards on up to Wither, I think is going to be our next stop. And then I'm just going to head east as far as we can before our supplies run out because we actually have a really satisfactory amount of cash right now. We can adventure as much as we please, but it's time for the episode to come to a close. So anyways, if you want to see more episodes, let me know. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. I look forward to seeing you all in future episodes. If they indeed happen, please leave me comments, leave likes, let me know. That's how I judge whether or not the series is staying or going. Please, please, please let me know. Be very, very vocal about it if you want the series to stay. I will see you all later. Hi, do everybody.